My name is Maddie, and you are watching True Summer Knits, my knitting podcast. We are back with another episode on this fine Tuesday afternoon, and I have a lot I want to talk about. It has not even been that long, and I don't have any finished objects, but a lot has been going on in my crafting world that I want to share with you guys today. But first things first, I am mic but you will probably hear the AC running. Last episode, I tried to turn it off and I got just insanely hot and it's only getting hotter. So I'm not gonna do that. I think the feels like is like 103 degrees outside. And uh, yeah, I, I can't live like that. So we're gonna hear some AC running. I was telling my husband, I was like, man, the only good thing about this weather is you don't even need to break out the crock pot. Just stick some chicken outside in the morning, come back in eight hours and dinner's ready. Let's get started. So like I said, no finished objects today. I do have stuff that I've been working on. Now, it's gonna come as a bit of a surprise because basically anything that I talked about in the last episode has been invalidated. Uh, what I mean by that is my big exciting cast on from the last episode was the Ilana camisole and I am not working on that anymore. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about why. First of all, I cast it on using, this is what's left of my first ball, the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the shade Blueberry Ice Cream, which is beautiful and a lovely yarn. It is so soft, it creates this wonderful fabric, it's so just smooth, I, I love it. Honestly, I would prefer to use this over the Merino if they had it in like the same kind of color range that they have the merinos, the, mer the merino colors in. It's not the right yarn for this project in my opinion. Um, and I don't think that necessarily has to be true, but I'll kind of explain to you how I came to that conclusion. So I cast it on, I did a gauge swatch, I did a, a couple, and on three, it's the pattern is meant to be knit on three millimeter needles with like a light fingering, fingering weight yarn. One of the recommended yarns is pure silk, which in my opinion is thinner than cotton merino, especially when you block it. The cotton merino kind of plumps up a little bit, I guess because of the merino and cotton tends to grow. So it sort of fills in those gaps and pure silk really doesn't do that. I thought if the pure silk works for other people, it should work for me using the cotton merino. But the gauge swatch was coming out, first of all, when I did it on the three millimeter needles, it was just, I didn't like the fabric it created, it was too gappy, and once I blocked it, I felt like to get a fabric I liked, I kind of had to stretch it out more than I would have wanted to. So I cast on a swatch with the 2.75 millimeter needles, which was a slightly better fabric. Ideally, I would have gone down more, my problem was that my gauge was tight. It was already too tight on the three millimeter needles, but I think when I did the 2.75 and I got a fabric I was mostly okay with, I believe I was getting, and this is after blocking, I was getting 28 stitches per four inches, and the intended gauge is 26 stitches per four inches. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you work out the math, it does kind of make a difference based on what size you would want. And another thing I didn't realize was that this pattern is only from the size extra extra small to large, which was strange to me. I didn't, I didn't realize that. So yeah, I was getting 28 stitches and I wasn't all that happy with the fabric, but I was like, okay, I can make this work. So I did the math. Basically, I, I take the number of body stitches, I divide it by 26 stitches to see what the intended uh, amount of inches is supposed to be for the pattern, like how she designed it to be, and instead I divided that amount of body stitches by 28. Oh my god, let me work out this math. X amount of stitches by... none of this matters. The point is that I did math to figure out what the designer wanted the body circumference to be, and then I did the other math to figure out how I could get what circumference I would get if, I, if my gauge was 28 stitches rather than the intended 26. And what I, the conclusion I came to 
is that if I knit the size small, I would kind of get somewhere in between the intended extra small and small size, which was fine with me because honestly, I did not want the amount of negative ease that the designer intended for this pattern. I think it was somewhere between two, uh, negative two to five inches. So I thought I would be happy with the size that the small would get me at a slightly tighter gauge. It still would be tighter than I may have wanted, but to get somewhere with less negative ease, I would have had to go up, I was doing the math, and I would have had to go up to like a size large or something like that. And I was worried about, you know, the triangle size or like how it would fit in other areas. And I just did not want to worry about all that. So I was like, whatever, I will be okay if I cast on the small and I can make it work. So I did that and the way that pattern is knit is you essentially start right at the top of the front strap. Um, you do two in the front, two in the back, triangles. So, I, and it's all charted, it's completely charted. I was talking about this in the last episode. Like the entire thing, it's just one big chart. So I'm following the chart, I do the first triangle I do the second triangle, and then once I've completed those two, I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, this seems really small. I'm like, there's no way this this would fit me. And I'm thinking it's a row gauge issue. So I'm, I'm like trying to figure out, okay, how many more rows and increases do I need to add to get, like it, w it wouldn't have even gone down to like my boobs. Like they would have been like, like that. So I was really confused. And then I'm looking at the pattern file and I scroll up and I was knitting the size extra small. Now, that is all on me. Nobody else is to blame for that. That is literally just my own stupidity. Um, how that came to be was that this particular pattern, instead of all these sizes being in one PDF file like most written patterns are, I guess since this one is completely charted and each pattern requires a different chart, she broke every size up into a different file and for whatever godforsaken reason, I clicked on the extra small file instead of the small file. So basically, I spent like two days knitting these triangles, and they were the completely wrong size. And then the entire time that I'd been knitting them, I'd been looking at them and thinking, I don't know if I really like this fabric, like, I feel like it's a little gapey. I don't know if this is really what I intended it to be, and I'm just like not confident about it. And I feel like when I'm working on something that is inevitably going to be really good, or at least has been for me in the past, I get that feeling of like inspiration when I'm working on it and I can see it coming together and I can imagine it as a finished object and I'm excited about it. And the whole time I was knitting this, I just didn't have that. So I was already unsure about it. And then I realized I've wasted like three days knitting the wrong size, I have to completely start over. And it occurred to me that I didn't really want to start over. I was just not excited about this pattern. It, it was not the pattern itself. I just feel like the yarn was not right. I would have rather been able to get gauge um, and maybe even knit like a size medium or something so it could get a little less fitted. That would kind of been impossible with this yarn, uh, at least not without a lot of modifications that I didn't feel like doing to an entirely charted pattern. So instead I, took that yarn and I cast on the petal drop camisole by Florence Miller. And that was totally the right decision because as soon as I started knitting that and I started seeing it come together, I got that like inspiration feeling that I'm kind of seeking when I'm working on a project. And I have gotten a lot of progress done on this and it's not even been like, I haven't even been devoting every hour of my day to this, you know? But I'll show you what I've got. Oh, it looks so good on camera. I feel like it looks even better than it looks in real life. Now, it's lace, so you kind of have to stretch it out just a little bit so you can see how it's intended to look. But if you've not seen it before, it is this beautiful lace rib. It is extremely simple. It's a, four, it's a four row repeat. It's almost entirely knits and purls. There's just one row where you have the knit two togethers and the yarn overs. It is extremely simple. The Someone who's never done lace before could easily do this. It's n nothing compared to the Barbro top, which is still s is easy in my mind, but 
more complicated than this for sure. Um, so where I am, it's knitted from the bottom up. I cast on the amount of body stitches and I actually, it's funny because this is another case of me not properly reading before I start doing things. I wasn't sure if I wanted to add waist shaping or not. Um, I wasn't opposed to it, but I know I've kind of been talking recently about how I like the idea of having some looser lacy tops. So I was like, okay, I'll just cast on and then as I go on, I'll figure out if I want to do waist shaping or not. Because I'm thinking of it from the perspective of top down. I didn't think of it from the perspective of bottom up. So I read like the first line and it was like for this size, cast on X amount of stitches. So I did that and I get all the way up to the part where the waist shaping begins. And then I realized I'm like, I start thinking it through and I'm like, how could I just choose to do waist shaping? If it's from the bottom up, I'd have to start increasing, which means my circumference would have to be smaller if I want to do waist shaping. So I go back and look and yes, I cast it on in the amount of stitches you had to cast on if you wanted to do waist shaping. She had included different numbers for if you weren't going to do waist shaping. So the universe decided for me that we were going to be doing waist shaping in this pattern and I am totally cool with that. It's actually breaking it up a little bit because, you know, you just knit all of this body, I think for, it's like around six and a half inches that she has you do that. And then somewhere within a few repeats, I started doing the waist increases. It's, and it's, it's done, like she writes it out like per row, because obviously you have to do it in pattern, um, which is always interesting to see how designers write things to keep the flow of the pattern, but also add shaping. And I'm trying to really study that because I wanna understand that better for when I create my own things. I am feeling very inspired by this. I, I think I've got 12 more rows to go on, 12 or like 15, somewhere between there, to go on the actual body. And then I will start separating for the front and the back. And she said it, it'll, it'll meant to be a little cropped, which is fine with me, especially because I know the cotton merino will grow a little bit. And I prefer things to be cropped anyway. But yeah, so I have been working on this a lot and it's been knitting up just incredibly fast because what I'm about to talk about, I'll explain to you that even though I haven't been working on another project, so to say, I've been putting a lot of my time and effort into another adventure, I guess, in my knitting. So I haven't been you know, devoting all of my time to this, but still, I feel like it's knitted up extremely fast. Because since that last episode, I casted on the Ilana Camisole, knit two complete triangles, and then cast this on and started knitting it. I really like this pattern. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like this pattern is going to look amazing in this color. And I think this color looks very nice on me. And I'm really excited to have this done. So I plan on mostly just continuing to exclusively work on this until it's done. I really don't feel like it's going to take me much longer. I think it'll definitely be done by the next episode and I'll be on to my next project because it's just so quick. I mean, it's so simple. I don't ever have to look at the chart. Now that I'm doing the shaping, I do have to look at the instructions to see how she wants me to shape and increase during each row, but most you're only increasing right at the sides. The rest of it is just in chart, so it's still super quick and simple. But that's not all I've been working on. So, the other thing I've been working on, I believe, I don't know if I actually mentioned this in the last episode, I decided that I wanted to design my own tank top. And when I say that, I don't mean I'm like trying to like become a pattern designer or anything. I just mean I want to use my creativity to create something that I want that's made like just for me, you know, my own design. And, you know, I talked a lot about how I was interested in lace tank tops, so I thought, like, why not create my own? I can do lace knitting, I can sit down with a stitch dictionary, use some swatches, and come up with my own design. So I had actually bought this yarn specifically for this project, and I'll show you what yarn that is. This is also, like, an acquisition. So, 
This is Knitting for All of Pure Silk in the Ice Blue. I posted about this a little bit on my Instagram. If you follow me, True Summer Knits on Instagram, follow me. And um, I spent basically m most of the days of last week while I was working on the petal drop camisole, I was in s like obsessively swatching with this yarn with all different lace patterns. And I'll show you what, I, what book I mostly was using at first. So I have a physical copy of this book. Uh, I have another edition of this book series, the cable one. I talked about that in my last episode that I'm gonna use to design my husband's anniversary sweater. But this is their lace edition. And it's got, you know, a lot of sections with some really pretty lace patterns. And I sat down and I was using it. And every day I was feeling so frustrated I only have a couple of actual swatches to show you, but trust me, I did a bunch of other swatches that I just ended up unraveling because I was like, why bother blocking it and everything if I already don't like it just from testing it out with this yarn, you know what I mean? But I know the first swatch I finished was this, this one. I actually posted it on my Instagram story because I was like, do I like this? And you can see I literally messed up in this row. So you have to use your, I'm just going to cover that row up got to use your imagination and imagine the fabric is just these little four little I think the pattern was called sweet violets in the book it looked so pretty in the book but I was just not feeling inspired by this pattern with a pure silk you know so I was like okay that's fine and I, I did a couple others and I just wasn't liking them I don't know I felt like the Barbro top was made for the pure silk like that lace pattern shined in the pure silk and I talked it up a ton in that last episode where I was like, Pure Silk is perfect for lace. This will work for any of your lace projects. It's awesome. And then I could not find a single lace pattern that I really enjoyed in the Pure Silk this time. And I'm, I was not just limited to this book. I have an ebook of the 280 Japanese lace stitches. I was working on that too. I tried a bunch of those. And the patterns themselves are beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but just nothing... It's the same with the, the Alana Camel Soul. None of them were like speaking to me, like none of them felt right. And I just knew that when I hit something that was going to like actually inspire me to create a finished product I was proud of, I would feel that inspiration feeling, you know? And it, it just wasn't hitting. So I kept swatching. I did, I did this one, which I thought I would like at first, but when I thought of actually turning it into a full tank top, I wasn't liking it. Just didn't, and I, I couldn't decide on like, necklines and shape and fit and I just felt so down like I just was feeling so like oh my gosh this is impossible for me to do I was feeling really discouraged I guess is the best way to do it um and then finally I started swatching a bit with the cotton merino and I realized I guess my vision or like what feels right to me that yarn was working better for me but I still couldn't feel confident about anything. Even though I'd sort of had some stitch patterns I liked with that yarn, I wasn't feeling like set on like any kind of shape or fit, you know? And I just kept flip-flopping and I was like, well, I can only make this in one way. So I have to feel confident about it. And I was just, again, I was feeling so discouraged. And then this wonderful thing happened. This is going to be like a serious moment. I went to a wedding Sunday night with my husband and we didn't know anybody there except for the bride, the groom, and like a couple of people that were there. So we basically spent the whole night just meeting all these people. And I met this woman and her friend, this, this man, um, and she's actually like a spiritual advisor. She's like very like hippie, but like in a cool way. Like I loved her, she was awesome. And I was drinking margaritas, always gotta drink my margs when I'm out. And I was telling her like, you know, just, how these, these realizations I'd come to recently about like my creativity. And I realized that I had these beliefs that like, oh, I'm, I'm not creative enough to come up with my own designs. You know, I'm good at you know, riffing off of things that already exist, but I don't have the creativity within me to come up with interesting things or to make my own designs or make my own creations. Like that's just not who I am. And like I, re I told her I was realizing that I'm not saying that's true, but I believe that. Like to the fact 
that I was convinced it was true and it was really getting in the way of me creating anything because it just felt like something that was beyond my ability. You know, like I can learn how to knit, I can learn how to sew, I can learn all these skills, but I can't learn how to make something from scratch from my head, you know? And so it felt impossible and I was telling her that and she was listening to me and she, I was talking to that guy too, we were just talking about like, you know, why, why, do, why do you think that? Like, why do you believe that? And she was like, that's not true. At some point, somebody said something like that to you and you just started to believe it. And it really just sounds stupid, but it really clicked to me that she was right. Like, those were just beliefs. Even though in my heart they feel like the truth, they're not the truth, they're just beliefs I have. And then I went home that night, well, not that night, I was really drunk. So the next day, I was working on the swatch again and I'd already started the stitch pattern and it just clicked with me. Like, I just knew what I wanted to make and I felt confident in it, in the stitch pattern. Um, I, I liked the yarn I was using, but I didn't like the color, but I knew what color I wanted. So I was swatching with the Knitting for Olive Japanese Anemone, which is a great color. I just, I'm not feeling like particularly inspired by it right now. It's a good color and I definitely will use it at some point, but again, I just wasn't feeling that inspiration with this color right now with that stitch pattern. But I really liked the way the stitch pattern was looking with the yarn. Um, I will show more of it next episode. I wanna get some more details finalized and I wanna get the new yarn to come in before I really start sharing stuff, you know? Just so I don't, you know, put the cart before the horse or whatever the saying is. But I, it just clicked with me. I felt like ready to like take on this creative venture and it's it feels so good. Cause there's something about, you know, I, I can create I can knit other patterns, I can do it in the colors I want, I can make the modifications I want, but there's something really creatively freeing about having control about something from start to finish of the project. And like I can work on a month on another person's design and it's mine, but when I finish this thing that I've designed all by myself, I can fully say like, I created this, like all of this, you know what I mean? And that's really what I wanna put my energy towards. So yeah, that was a long, drawn out, deep talk, I guess, but I am really excited. So I ordered the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the shade Soft Blue, because I just got the feeling I wanted this to be a more n neutral color and uh, I could you know, play around with the actual design. I know I'm gonna do like a boat neck or like a mostly boat neck fitted because I can do that with the cotton merino. And then I've got like a stitch pattern figured out that I wanna do and like an edging I wanna do at the bottom. So I am gonna gauge, keep gauge watching with the Japanese anemone, but I do wanna have this petal drop camisole mostly finished before I do that because I feel like once I'm working on my own design, I kind of want to be able to put all of my my brain power towards that for at least for the beginning when I'm figuring out math and shaping and everything. That way I, I don't get myself too distracted or, you know, confused. But yes, I still love this yarn, uh, the ice blue in the pure silk. It's just not, I feel like maybe it's a little too challenging for like my first design. And maybe that's another limiting belief, I don't know, but I'm just not feeling like this is what I wanna work with right now. But I did see that Starcross Knits uh, came up with a design for this yarn. It's a really pretty like V-neck, almost like vest style, like it's a thicker strapped sleeveless top and it's got like this lace edging and a V-neck and she designed it for the pure silk. So I figure, you know, that's in testing, it'll probably be out in a couple of months but I can just knit that with this later or at some point anytime I want and um, that will be a good use for this yarn but yeah so that's what I've been putting a lot of energy towards I know when you hear swatching it doesn't sound like that time intensive but I was sitting down for like multiple hours every day just going through different stitch patterns and different books and like lace patterns on Pinterest and just like racking my brain trying to decide what I wanted to do. So the fact that I was able to complete this much of this camisole while also doing all that, I feel like it's pretty exciting for me, to be honest. Those are my only real works in progress right now. Uh, if you remember 
for my last few episodes, I've, I also have that April cardigan that I'm working on. I'm not touching that thing right now. I'm also not feeling very creatively inspired by that. I don't even know if I'm going to end up finishing that. I'm thinking about maybe unraveling it and saving it for some kind of crop sweater or something with a more interesting stitch pattern in the fall. I'm not sure, but either way, I, I can't even touch a cardigan right now. It's one million bajillion degrees outside, so that's just really not what I'm focused on, working on right now. So I'm fully engrossed in my tank tops, and I cannot wait to share more with my tank top design in the next episode. My dog is itching herself. And then as for acquisitions, I do have one thing I want to share that I'm actually going to be returning, but I'll show it to you. It's, it's nothing to do with the yarn itself. It's just, you know, obviously I have specific colors that I like and want to use, and when you order online, you're not really sure what you're going to get. And unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I did not like what I got. But I am, they, they do let me return it. So I'm gonna return this and maybe at some point get another color. Although I don't know that I even really need this to work on right now because I've got all my other projects going on. But I'll stop rambling and just show you. So this is the Quince & Co Sparrow in the shade Nanny Berry. Now, it's not the worst color for me. I feel like if I wanted to, I could make it work. But in my opinion, it's just a tad too warm for me. I thought it was gonna be like a cooler tone mauve. And it's still, it's, it's one of those colors. It's like hard to accurately tell what it's going to look like. In some lights, it even looks cool toned. But generally, like in this light, I feel like it looks very warm, like almost like a like rusty-ish. I feel like it's probably more neutral, but I really want my colors to look explicitly lean cool. I did get three hanks of this, and I think it comes in 50 grams. This is 100% linen yarn. Um, yes, you get 168 yards per 50 grams. It's like a fingering weight. Six times four. Well, it's saying that it's got a 24 stitch gauge per four inches, which is weird. It feels a lot thinner than that, but maybe linen just grows. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I would love to use this yarn. I just know I'm never going to use this color. So I'm going to return that. And then once I'm ready to cast on some kind of project with some linen fingering weight yarn, I will definitely be repurchasing it because I do I do like it. It's It feels similar to the pure silk. It's definitely rougher or maybe even stiffer than the pure silk. But it does have a very... It's, it, does seem smoother than the pure silk if that makes sense like when you rub your finger against it it almost kind of feels like paper smooth where in your hand the pure silk feels softer but when you go to touch it it's a little rougher and like let more uneven if that makes sense but it's definitely something I would like to use in the future I just don't like the color unfortunately I wish it was a cooler tone mauve because I would be super excited to try it in that case but it's okay. Whenever the time comes, there are other colors that I think will work with my palette. That is my only yarn acquisition. I do have something else yarn related I want to talk about. So uh, when I got all three of those colors of cotton merino that I talked about, I got the blueberry ice cream, Japanese anemone, and, and then I also got the dusty banana. I'll insert a picture of that shade right here so you can see what I'm talking about. It's, I was hoping it would be like a pale, cool yellow. And I knew it was a gamble when I got it, and I knew it was possible I wouldn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And I knew I wasn't going to use it. I didn't think I could return it. I mean, knitting for all of us in Copenhagen, I didn't know how that would work. So I thought, like, I'm not going to use this. Maybe I can just try to dye it and see if that works. I mean, it's cotton merino. It's, like, mostly co cotton content. So I thought I could try to use just, like, rip dye and... Um, use like color theory to try to figure out what color I wanted. I had like a couple of sh shades of the dye. I think I had like a, a royal blue and a fuchsia. So I did one of those color theory mixers online where basically you select your shade that you're starting with and the shades you want to add and you can combine them sort of to see what colors you could make when you mix them. Um, that did not work at all. I, I think it was probably more to do with my ratios 
of dye that I added, but um, I posted about it on my Instagram story. I did a, got a like a stainless steel pot full of hot water. I wound the the yarn up back into like hanks um, and dyed them in the pot with hot water and dye, and I put some vinegar and some salt in there because it was cotton and merino. And honestly, it didn't turn out to be the worst thing ever, and I'll, I'll show you, but it's just not for me, and I will never use it. So I'm actually going to give it to my friend on Instagram, Inez Knits. I'm gonna send it to her, just have her pay shipping. She offered to pay for it, and I was like, this is my Frankenstein experiment yarn. You cannot give me money for this. No, it's okay. But I'll show you what, what I, I came up with. Okay, so this is still like unwound. This is a difficult yarn to accurately see what it's going to look like, but my problem with it, it's not so much the shade. It's not a bad shade. It's it's darker than I would have wanted. I'm not for really into dark colors right now, but I don't know if you can tell. It comes off smoother on camera, but it's like variegated. Um, one of my friends said it was kind of like night sky-ish, which it definitely is. I just hate any yarn that's not solid colors. Um, that's why I would love to be able to dye my own yarn just so I could get colors that may not be available in certain, you know, yarn bases. But I really would only want like 100% solid colors. And nobody ever seems to do that. So is that really possible or like plausible to do with hand dyeing yarn at home? I mean, I'm sure acid dyes would work better, like cool water dyes, but has anyone done that? Like, is it feasible to dye yarn to be a solid color completely and not come out variegated? I mean, first of all, with this, I had no idea what I was doing. This was all guesswork. Definitely, I probably should have, I had the hanks like wound, you know, you, you twist the hank around into an actual hank. And I had them twisted and I realized after the fact that I probably should have had them just untwisted in the pot so they could get more evenly saturated. Um, so I'm sure that was a factor, but if anyone knows more about hand dyeing, if it's possible for me to get like a completely solid color for hand dyeing yarn, I would love to hear about it because it'd be really cool if I could take like the white cotton merino and turn it into a, a color that cotton merino may not offer, you know, in their base, but I really like and want to use with that yarn but I just don't know much about the science of yarn dyeing. So if anyone knows about that, please do share. But yeah, I'm just gonna have her pay for the shipping and I'm just gonna wind this up into cakes and send it to her. The texture feels a little different than it does, than it did in the ball. But I feel like if you wash it again, it'll probably go back to normal. I was worried about like it felting. I wouldn't know how that would work because it's, like I said, it's only 30% merino content. Um, it seems fine. I just, I think it might need another bath to get like maybe any chemicals or anything out of there. Um, but I think it'll go back to normal. It just feels a little drier than it did, you know, it, it does when you buy it. But it's, it's not the worst thing ever. So I'm gonna cake these up, send them to her. I, I just knew I'd never use them and I'd rather somebody take them instead of them just like languishing in my cabinet for the rest of eternity. So yeah, that was my experiment that wasn't necessarily a failure, but it, it wasn't really a success either. Now, I have one more thing I wanna talk about, and this is really exciting. So I did post about this on my Instagram story, but if, if you haven't seen that, I will share the update. So I've never thought, since I've been getting into knitting, I really didn't think I would want to spin my own yarn. Um, I, not that I thought it sounded like boring or anything, it just, I hadn't gotten hit with that bug. And then I think I started seeing Knitting with Eve talk about it and I started thinking about like, you know, it'd be cool if I could, I could, if I could buy like different kinds of fibers, and like blend them to make my own blends or like, you know, make my own yarn and dye it and like get my own sort of yarn and a weight I want and a color I want and a fiber blend I want. So I was like, I wonder, like maybe I should just buy some fiber, buy a drop spindle, just test it out, see if I like it, you know, like for cheap. Um, so I was telling my mom, and my mom is a machine knitter, so she's got like the big knitting machines, and she does all of that, and she's got tons of yarn, 
and she's also a Facebook marketplace online shopping genius. She literally found my husband and I's house. Like we were gonna go live in a condo and then she found this house for like a great price and it was like perfect and now we're living here. So she texts me and we're at dinner and she, te she texts me a picture of this beautiful wooden um, spinning wheel on Facebook Marketplace for $25. And that's like basically free as far as I'm concerned for one of those things because if you looked at how much a spinning wheel costs, like, I mean, the cheapest you're gonna get one for is like probably like brand new or even like partially used is probably like maybe 300, I don't know. And this one looked very nice and I'll show you in a second. So I'm like, hell yes, mother please, contact this woman, I need this right, right now. So on Saturday, we drove to go get it. And oh my gosh, so it is an Ashford Traveler 2. It, if you don't know anything about spinning wheels, which I certainly didn't until I looked it up, the current Ashford Traveler model is the third. So this is like the, the second oldest, or second newest model of the Traveler. And it is a really nice, for, I, I don't know much about spinning wheels, but I will say the things about it in case you guys know. It's a single drive, it's got two treadles, scotch tensioned, and um, it's really pretty. I'll show it to you, let's go look. So I'm just gonna quickly show this to you. So this is the Ashford Traveler 2. It's got, like I said, the two treadles here, um, one of the bobbins is on the flyer, and so it's got three total. Um, I really don't know much about it, so it's hard for me to talk about it, but, you know, it spins, the yarn comes out of here somehow, and I am really excited to learn how to use this thing, so yeah. The angle might have changed because I had to reset up my camera after trying to show you the spinning wheel. But, yeah, if you look up how much those things cost, I think we found one that had sold on eBay for $550. Um, the new model of that is $800. Like, these things are expensive. And I got it for $25. I show up at this place, we're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's it was like a 40 minute drive from like where I live, but out in the country. Because I live in Mississippi, so it's like just out, like they don't get internet out there, uh, in the middle of the woods. and they had like a yard sale going on, like they just had a bunch of stuff. And I like, it was these two women, uh, a mother and a daughter, like they were older. They had no idea what it even was. They had figured out enough to like label it as a spinning wheel on Facebook Marketplace. But I, I naturally assumed like, oh, there's an older woman, maybe it was hers. So I was talking to her and she's like, no, I don't even, I didn't even, I don't even know what this is. Um, or apparently her niece, or no, her nephew or brother-in-law or some relation of, of that sort is a carpenter and an old woman gave it to him. So they just sold it on Facebook Marketplace for $25. And I checked it out, I posted it on Reddit to see like if it seems to be in working condition, like I don't know what to look for, but it was $25, you know? And apparently they said everything looks good the only thing was the top part, which is called the mother of all, where the flyer, which is the spinny part, goes. They said it looked a little wonky and like I couldn't really figure out what was going on. And they mentioned I needed a new drive band. So I tried to place an order for what I thought I needed um, on thewoolery.com. And this wonderful woman named Sarah messaged me back. And she was like, sorry, this part you ordered, we don't have in stock. And I was like, okay, well, since you're here, do I even need this part? And I sent her a bunch of pictures, so I was like, I don't know what this is, like what model exactly this is, and I can't figure out like what drive band I need to buy. And she told me the drive band I ordered was not the right one. Um, it needed like a cotton twine drive band, which I ordered the maintenance kit, and that drive band and a new brake band are actually included in there. But she told me I needed to flip the flyer, which is a spinny part again, 180 degrees around. Um, someone had clearly like screwed everything back in, so the poles were a little off, so I just kind of messed with them and I could fit everything correctly. But the only thing I need to actually use that thing to spin yarn is the drive band. 
and I ordered a maintenance kit which has like oil so I can lube up all the parts and um, I don't know just some other things to maintain it and it's got the drive band and new, new brake band so once that comes in from the woolery and I ordered some fine merino top to start practicing with um, I'm gonna get going I mean I I would not have probably bought a spinning wheel if it wasn't for this situation because I mean I, I if you've never done something like this before I'd probably recommend that you try it out cheaply to see if you even like it but I mean it, it was it was cheaper to do I spent more on the maintenance kit than I did on the spinning wheel so I feel like the universe is telling me to spin my own yarn I don't know it kind of feels like that and I've been trying to read into it it does seem like a difficult thing to do but I am really excited to learn I just think I and don't get me wrong I've tried lots of new skills so I know that beginner overconfidence so I don't have that anymore <laughs> but I would love to like one day like if I wanted to create like a bamboo merino blend I could buy like the fibers you know comb them together create it at like a weight that I want like if I want like a summer yarn I could create like a fingering weight yarn which I've heard is like notoriously difficult to create but I don't know maybe I'll get there and then I could dye it like a color that I want and then I could design something and knit it out of this yarn that I've created and dyed like how cool would that be to have literally complete control over every single step of the process like that is completely yours you know what I mean and I think that's what's exciting to me about the thought of spinning so yeah I think that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out I don't know when that order is gonna come in but until then it's a very nice piece of machinery and it looks very nice in my living room so it, you know I've got other knitting stuff I want to work on so I can wait but yeah that was a really exciting development I could not believe we found that for $25 and thank you to the staff at thewoolery.com who helped me figure out what I need to get this thing working but yeah that was a long episode I talked about a lot <laughs> and I hope I didn't ramble or drive you crazy too much so thank you if you made it this far and I will see you guys next time. That's all I've got to talk about. Have a wonderful day. Bye.